Welcome to Chop and Brew, everybody. I am Chip Waltone. I am Michael Dawson. I'm Ted Weidman. We are in the backyard of Michael Dawson doing a polar opposite of the last time you saw this dude on Chop and Brew. Why is that? Number one, it's daylight out and we're done with the brew session. Number two, last time we did a small beer. Today we're going very big. Very big. How big and what kind? Belgian dark strong to the tune of eight and a half percent, give or take. What we have here is a beer that's about a year and a half old, kind of similar to what we're going to be brewing today. A little bit more emphasis on the sugar, less emphasis on the yeast in this one. We are going to downplay the dark candy sugar in today's batch and play up the yeast which is 3822 Y yeast Belgian dark strong ale formerly known as Engelmonster and before that it was known as Dutch Castle. It's a nice yeast it hasn't been seen for about going on six years so I need to reacquaint myself with it. Brew day, tasting notes, silent Ted's in the house. Chop for chop. Brew for brew. I'm sorry was that your line? Something. Everybody's lying. <laughs> Full disclosure before we launch into any kind of attempt at a conversation here, there's been a lot of beer and there's been a lot of brats in this brew session. So there's not a whole lot of actual footage. We're gonna talk about what we can and then we're gonna taste these beers. But first off, man, tell us about the beer with the 3822 that we're brewing tonight or have brewed tonight. It's gone through a few different stages, but I think I think the, the brainstorm I had tonight was that I think everybody should take two and a half gallons of this 10 gallon batch. I'll ferment it here. Okay. We'll do primary fermentation here. After primary, everybody takes two and a half gallons home and does something different with it. I'll volunteer to do the control because I know you like to go crazy. Yep. You're probably going to dry hop it. <laughs> I can't Maybe. But fruit, oak, bread, I think, I think the sky's kind of the limit. So we could do four different riffs on a theme. Okay. With this same base beer. Base beer is going to be a eight and a half percent dark, not this black. Target was about 20 SRM, which is gonna be kind of a ruby brownish color. And not this high a percentage of sugar. This used 20% of the D180 or the D2, the dark date sugar having candy syrup, which is like we noted, licorice -y, raisiny, raisiny, rummy. I get a little leather from it. Mm -hmm. Molasses. Mm -hmm. Boom, the first step in brewing a big beer is to go to your friend's house when he's not around and steal a bigger kettle to use for your mash ton. <laughs> this 15 gallon mega pot does not belong to me. I don't think it's been missed yet. Mission accomplished. This is 75, 76% Belgian Pilsner malt. It's about 11% Bohemian Dark. We've got 3% Caramel 120, 1% Black Prince, which is basically a debittered black malt, just to give it a little blush in the cheeks. At the end of the boil, we're gonna add about 8% dark candy sugar that's going to give us 
original gravity of 1076, if all goes according to plan. It's already smelling pretty, pretty toasty and biscuity between that Black Prince and the Bohemian Dark. Shooting for a mash temperature of 152 Fahrenheit to number one, create a pretty fermentable wort, but at the same time, respect the attenuation level of the yeast we're gonna be uh, using. It's a, it's a pretty highly attenuative strain. I haven't used it in a while. I need to refresh my memory on it. So we're gonna be a little bit cautious uh, between its attenuation and alcohol tolerance plus the sugar we're gonna be using. So we're aiming for a, a fairly highly fermentable wort. Not extremely highly fermentable, but fairly highly fermentable. So there. Timer starts now. And then the remaining 8% or so is sugar. A pound of D180 and a pound of soft brown candy sugar in 10 gallons. So we're gonna use a lot less sugar in tonight's batch. It's not gonna be as dark. It's not going to be that sugar flavor dominated, which should let the yeast shine through a little bit more. Like I said, it's been a long time since I've used this yeast. Um, it's supposed to have balanced phenolics and esters with high acid production. So I'm gonna take, take some pH measurements so we can look at before and after fermentation, see just how much acid gets produced, which I think might lend itself pretty well to fruit okay. or and, oak. And what fermentation temperature are you using? Yeah, you're talking about pushing it, right? Yeah, I was gonna to try to do <laughs> mid-70s, keep it, keep it on the warm side. That's important to know, I think. Yeah. When you look at the base recipe for a traditional Belgian, for a lot of those, especially doubles, doubles, Mm -hmm. There's the dark candy sugar, there's mm -hmm. often sugar in Saison's, and even um, golden Belgian strong. What about yeah. the sugar lends to the Belgian-iness of these kind of <clears throat> traditional styles? Belgian brewers talk about the concept of digestibility, which sort of gets translated in American circles as dryness. Okay. I think it's not, it's not an exact translation, but that's what they're getting at is that you have a really high gravity, high octane, not overly hoppy beer that still finishes very dry and crisp and drinkable. It's digestible. You can drink a glass full of this 12% beer and not feel bloated. It's not like a barley wine. It's the diametric opposite okay. of something big and zoftig like an ice box or a barley wine. Right up until you fall down. Right up until you fall down. <laughs> And you put those in at flame out in this specific recipe. Yep. You didn't want to, is that because you don't want to cook them, you don't want to boil them, or is it just because they're pointless at any other time? They it do was the same thing. To maximize extraction of bitterness from the hops okay. during the boil. We got two ounces of first gold going in at the start of the boil. That's the only hop addition. Strong dark ales don't need to be hoppy malty and complex. This smells really chocolatey, kind of Munich-y, Bach-like almost. English or Slovenian hops are pretty traditional for beers like this, the dark Abbey style or dark strong Belgians. What was this beer? So you brewed this, this is almost, this is going on two years old. Mm -hmm. This was 80% Belgian Pilsner, 20% D180 sugar, Palisade for bittering, and uh, the Y-East 3787 Trappist. And if memory serves, I think I did kind of a quasi open fermentation on this one. Not a purely open, but you didn't seal it. Right. Right?
3787 actually if you're if you're watching this episode years down the road and the 3822 isn't available 3787 would be I think uh, probably my first choice substitute another one I'd go for would be the 3522 Ardennes which also has kind of a balanced phenol and ester profile and it's pretty pretty alcohol tolerant in its own right and those are out all the time those are out all the time okay. yeah this was a three gallon batch as well right you were talking mm -hmm. about how the sugar in the batch we're doing tonight is totally different from the ratio of sugar mm -hmm. into this little three yeah. gallon batch yeah much smaller percentage not as dark it's not going to have as much impact on the flavor of the of the finished product in general, if someone's brewing kind of eight and a half, nine percent plus, what kind of things do you now need to take into consideration if you're going for a big old beer? Lots of healthy yeast, good aeration. Um, if you're adding sugar to a beer like a barley wine or a Belgian ale, it's you might consider adding it at high croissant. It kind of helps reduce the osmotic pressure that the cells experience during fermentation. It also forces them to metabolize the more complex malt sugars first and not selectively ferment the simpler sucrose, fructose molecules that you'll find in, in simple sugars and in syrups. So if someone were to do that, they'd pitch mm -hmm. the yeast tonight, but they would wait till when it's high croissant, 48? Day, two days, it kind of, your mileage may vary. Just pour it in, sanitize the long end of a mm -hmm. spoon maybe, and kind of give it a stir yep. to make sure it's dissolved. Would you siphon it in or just pour it in? I've done it both ways. Okay. Um, if you are hitting it at high croissant and there's still lots of activity going on, any oxygen that you mix in by just dumping it right in would get scavenged by the yeast pretty much right away. So you don't have away. to worry about that so much. You don't have to worry about oxidation during the... Uh, during the fermentation. active portion of fermentation, which is another thing you can do for big beers is you can rouse them and agitate them, give them a little shot of oxygen in the first few days of fermentation above and beyond what you do pre-pitching the yeast. Okay. With oxygen itself, not just taking the carboy and sloshing it around? Either way. Okay. I've, I've been known to use just pure oxygen, but um, rocking the carboy back and forth will work too. It's kind of a combination of me mechanical agitation of rousing yeast back up into suspension sure. as well as forcing O2 back into solution. Pretty easy I brew think day. We hit it. It was a pretty peachy brew day. Yeah. Had some brats, had a lot of really tasty beers. Yeah. Good company. We talked to mm -hmm. we did a second part to the hop episode somewhere in the middle of that. That's called multitasking. That's what that is. Probably already out there on the internet. I suck, Todd rules. Todd, Ted. <laughs> My friend Todd. It's okay, it's just a vowel. Todd Weirman. So the brew day was pretty quick. Mm -hmm. Dawson dropped a little bit of nerd knowledge. Not nearly as long as Boat Bitter, but I think the beauty of this beer is gonna be what we all do to it in its second phase, its second fermentation. I think I'm gonna go with fruit since you said it. You didn't do some hops on it. I'm gonna I'm gonna surprise you guys with something oh, oh i bet yeah. it's hops it's gonna be weird what you thinking <laughs> wood bugs all of the i above? thought that was the control group bob's off camera bob mm -hmm. can take 2.5 or we'll figure something out bob's gonna I'm do thinking, something weird i'm thinking buggy wood sticks why east 38 22 private collection strain available now through end of september so hopefully this airs pretty soon we're gonna do some crazy things with it thanks to why east for once again hooking us up with the advanced pitch thanks to ted thanks to mike Thanks to Elsa and Bob off camera. Thanks to Emma and Beer for letting us post these silly episodes on their website. And thanks to all of you. I don't know if you know it, you're a part of a movement. You're part of a revolution. In the last two weeks, mm -hmm. gotten at least 400 new subscriptions and 200 new likes on Facebook. I, something happened. I don't know what happened, but people are finding their way to Chop and Brew finally. So we really appreciate it. Keep sending us your suggestions, chopandbrew at gmail.com. Until then, till you see what happens to these crazy 2.5 gallon variations of Belgian dark, strong, Belgian strong, dark, chop for chop. Brew for brew. And that too. <laughs>
There's women watching us. We can't do this right. <laughs> I, I have anxiety. Full disclosure before we start this discussion, there's a child in the background that it needs attention. Oh! oh. Phew. Bam! Oh. Okay. Good. Okay. Is there anything else we need to say? So. <laughs> Don't you mean. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> What I think is going to be most interesting about this is what we all do with it in its second phase of life. How we all affect it in second, secondary, prime... <laughs> Hi, you know, I'm Michael Dawson. You know, this is Chop and Brew. I'm just <laughs> taking control. You know, secondary primation. <laughs> That's not a word, Chip Walton. It is now. We're secondary primating this beer. <laughs> <laughs> And I can't even remember where. I'd like to thank Todd. How far? <laughs> That's me. <laughs> I mean, you pressured me into an early gravity reading, Chip Walton. The sample hadn't cooled off. I feel kind of violated. <laughs>